Part three, chapter three of Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. He is well, quite well, Zosimov cried cheerfully as they entered. He had come in ten minutes earlier and was sitting in the same place as before on the sofa. Raskolnikov was sitting in the opposite corner, fully dressed and carefully washed and combed, as he had not been for some time past. The room was immediately crowded, yet Nastasha managed to follow the visitors in and stayed to listen. Raskolnikov really was almost well, as compared with his condition the day before, but he was still pale, listless, and somber. He looked like a wounded man, or one who has undergone some terrible physical suffering. His brows were knitted, his lips compressed, his eyes feverish. He spoke little and reluctantly, as though performing a duty, and there was a restlessness in his movements. He only wanted a sling on his arm or a bandage on his finger to complete the impression of a man with a painful abscess or a broken arm. The pale, somber face lighted up for a moment when his mother and sister entered, but this only gave it a look of more intense suffering in place of its listless dejection. The light soon died away, but the look of suffering remained, and Zosimov, watching and studying his patient, with all the zest of a young doctor beginning to practice, noticed in him no joy at the arrival of his mother and sister, but a sort of bitter, hidden determination to bear another hour or two of inevitable torture. He saw later that almost every word of the following conversation seemed to touch on some sore place and irritate it. But at the same time he marveled at the power of controlling himself and hiding his feelings in a patient who the previous day had like a monomaniac fallen into a frenzy at the slightest word. Yes, I see myself now that I am almost well, said Raskolnikov, giving his mother and sister a kiss of welcome, which made Pulcheria Alexandrovna radiant at once. And I don't say this as I did yesterday, he said, addressing Razumihin with a friendly pressure of his hand. Yes, indeed. I am quite surprised at him today, began Zosimov, much delighted at the lady's entrance for he had not succeeded in keeping up a conversation with his patient for ten minutes. In another three or four days, if he goes on like this, he will be just as before, that is, as he was a month ago, or two, or perhaps even three. This has been coming on for a long while, eh? Confess now that it has been perhaps your own fault, he added, with a tentative smile, as though still afraid of irritating him. It is very possible, answered Raskolnikov coldly. I should say, too, continued Zosimov with zest, that your complete recovery depends solely on yourself. Now that one can talk to you, I should like to impress upon you that it is essential to avoid the elementary, so to speak, fundamental causes tending to produce your morbid condition. In that case, you will be cured. If not, it will go from bad to worse. These fundamental causes I don't know, but they must be known to you. You are an intelligent man and must have observed yourself, of course, I fancy the first stage of your derangement coincides with your leaving the university. You must not be left without occupation, and so work in a definite aim set before you might, I fancy, be very beneficial. Yes, yes, you are perfectly right. I will make haste and return to the university, and then everything will go smoothly. Zosimov, who had begun his sage advice partly to make an effect before the ladies, was certainly somewhat mystified when glancing at his patient he observed unmistakable mockery on his face this lasted an instant however pulcheria alexandrovna began at once thanking zosimov especially for his visit to their lodging the previous night what he saw you last night raskolnikov asked as though startled then you have not slept either after your journey ach roja that was only till two o'clock dunya and i never go to bed before two at home I don't know how to thank him either, Raskolnikov went on, suddenly frowning and looking down. Setting aside the question of payment, forgive me for referring to it, he turned to Zosimov, I really don't know what I have done to deserve such special attention from you. I simply don't understand it, and, and it weighs upon me, indeed, because I don't understand it. I tell you so candidly. Don't be irritated, Zosimov forced himself to laugh. Assume that you are my first patient. Well, we fellows just beginning to practice love our first patients as if they were our children, and some almost fall in love with them. And, of course, I am not rich in patients. 
i say nothing about him added raskolnikov pointing to razumihin though he has had nothing from me either but insult and trouble what nonsense he is talking why you are in a sentimental mood to-day are you shouted razumihin if he had had more penetration he would have seen that there was no trace of sentimentality in him but something indeed quite the opposite but avdotya romanovna noticed it she was intently and uneasily watching her brother as for you mother i don't dare to speak he went on as though repeating a lesson learned by heart it is only to-day that i have been able to realize a little how distressed you must have been here yesterday waiting for me to come back when he had said this he suddenly held out his hand to his sister smiling without a word but in this smile there was a flash of real unfeigned feeling dunya caught it at once and warmly pressed his hand overjoyed and thankful it was the first time he had addressed her since their dispute the previous day the mother's face lighted up with ecstatic happiness at the sight of this conclusive unspoken reconciliation yes that is what i love him for razumihin exaggerating it all muttered to himself with a vigorous turn in his chair he has these movements and how well he does it all the mother was thinking to herself what generous impulses he has and how simply how delicately he put an end to all the misunderstanding with his sister simply by holding out his hand at the right minute and looking at her like that and what fine eyes he has and how fine his whole face is he is even better looking than dunya but good heavens what a suit how terribly he's dressed vasya the messenger boy in afanasy ivanitch's shop is better dressed i could rush at him and hug him weep over him but i am afraid oh dear he's so strange he's talking kindly but i'm afraid why what am i afraid of oh rodya you wouldn't believe she began suddenly in haste to answer his words to her how unhappy dunya and i were yesterday now that it's all over and done with and we are quite happy again i can tell you fancy we ran here almost straight from the train to embrace you and that woman ah here she is good morning nastasya she told us at once that you were lying in a high fever and had just run away from the doctor in delirium and they were looking for you in the streets you can't imagine how we felt i couldn't help thinking of the tragic end of lieutenant potanchikov a friend of your father's you can't remember him rodya who ran out in the same way in a high fever and fell into the well in the courtyard and they couldn't pull him out till next day of course we exaggerated things we were on the point of rushing to find pyotr petrovitch to ask him to help because we were alone utterly alone she said plaintively and stopped short suddenly recollecting it was still somewhat dangerous to speak of pyotr petrovitch although we are quite happy again yes yes of course it's very annoying raskolnikov muttered in reply but with such a preoccupied and inattentive air that dunya gazed at him in perplexity what else was it i wanted to say he went on trying to recollect oh yes mother and you too dunya please don't think that i didn't mean to come and see you today and was waiting for you to come first what are you saying rodya cried pulcheria alexandrovna she too was surprised is he answering us as a duty dunya wondered is he being reconciled and asking forgiveness as though he were performing a rite or repeating a lesson i've only just waked up and wanted to go to you but was delayed owing to my clothes i forgot yesterday to ask her nastasya to wash out the blood i've only just dressed blood what blood pulcheria alexandrovna asked in alarm oh nothing don't be uneasy it was when i was wandering about yesterday rather delirious i chanced upon a man who had been run over a clerk delirious but you remember everything razumihin interrupted that's true raskolnikov answered with special carefulness i remember everything even to the slightest detail and yet why i did that and went there and said that i can't clearly explain now a familiar phenomenon interposed zosimov actions are sometimes performed in a masterly and most cunning way while the direction of the actions is deranged and dependent on various morbid impressions it's like a dream perhaps it's a good thing really that he should think me almost a madman thought raskolnikov why people in perfect health act in the same way too observed dunya looking uneasily at zosimov there is some truth in your observation the latter replied 
in that sense we are certainly all not infrequently like madmen but with the slight difference that the deranged are somewhat madder for we must draw a line a normal man it is true hardly exists among dozens perhaps hundreds of thousands hardly one is to be met with at the word madman carelessly dropped by zosimov in his chatter on his favourite subject everyone frowned raskolnikov sat seeming not to pay attention plunged in thought with a strange smile on his pale lips he was still meditating on something well what about the man who was run over i interrupted you razumihin cried hastily what raskolnikov seemed to wake up oh i got spattered with blood helping to carry him to his lodging by the way mamma i did an unpardonable thing yesterday i was literally out of my mind i gave away all the money you sent me to his wife for the funeral she's a widow now in consumption a poor creature three little children starving nothing in the house there's a daughter too perhaps you'd have given it yourself if you'd seen them but i had no right to do it i admit especially as i knew how you needed the money yourself to help others one must have the right to do it or else crevation si vous n'êtes pas content he laughed that's right isn't it dunya no it's not answered dunya firmly bah you too have ideals he muttered looking at her almost with hatred and smiling sarcastically i ought to have considered that well that's praiseworthy and it's better for you and if you reach a line you won't overstep you will be unhappy and if you overstep it maybe you will be still unhappier but all that's nonsense he added irritably vexed at being carried away i only meant to say that i beg your forgiveness mother he concluded shortly and abruptly that's enough rodya i am sure that everything you do is very good said his mother delighted don't be too sure he answered twisting his mouth into a smile a silence followed there was a certain constraint in all this conversation and in the silence and in the reconciliation and in the forgiveness and all were feeling it it is as though they were afraid of me raskolnikov was thinking to himself looking askance at his mother and sister Pulcheria alexandrovna was indeed growing more timid the longer she kept silent yet in their absence i seemed to love them so much flashed through his mind do you know rodya marfa petrovna is dead Pulcheria alexandrovna suddenly blurted out what marfa petrovna oh mercy on us marfa petrovna svidrigailov i wrote you so much about her ah yes i remember so she's dead oh really he roused himself suddenly as if waking up what did she die of only imagine quite suddenly pokeria alexandrovna answered hurriedly encouraged by his curiosity on the very day i was sending you that letter would you believe it that awful man seems to have been the cause of her death they say he beat her dreadfully why were they on such bad terms he asked addressing his sister not at all quite the contrary indeed with her he was always very patient considerate even in fact all those seven years of their married life he gave way to her too much so indeed in many cases all of a sudden he seems to have lost patience then he could not have been so awful if he controlled himself for seven years you seem to be defending him dunya no no he's an awful man i can imagine nothing more awful dunya answered almost with a shudder knitting her brows and sinking into thought that had happened in the morning pulcheria alexandrovna went on hurriedly and directly afterwards she ordered the horses to be harnessed to drive to the town immediately after dinner she always used to drive to the town in such cases she ate a very good dinner i am told after the beating that was always her habit and immediately after dinner so as not to be late in starting she went to the bathhouse you see she was undergoing some treatment with baths they have a cold spring there and she used to bathe in it regularly every day and no sooner had she got into the water when she suddenly had a stroke i should think so said zosimov and did he beat her badly what does that matter put in dunya hm but i don't know why you want to tell us such gossip mother said raskolnikov irritably as it were in spite of himself oh my dear i don't know what to talk about broke from pokeria alexandrovna why are you all afraid of me he asked with a constrained smile that's certainly true said dunya looking directly and sternly at her brother mother was crossing herself with terror as she came up the stairs his face worked as though in convulsion ah what are you saying dunya 
don't be angry please rodya why did you say that dunya pulcheria alexandrovna began overwhelmed you see coming here i was dreaming all the way in the train how we should meet how we should talk over everything together and i was so happy i did not notice the journey but what am i saying i am happy now you should not dunya i am happy now simply in seeing you rodya hush mother he muttered in confusion not looking at her but pressing her hand we shall have time to speak freely of everything as he said this he was suddenly overwhelmed with confusion and turned pale again that awful sensation he had known of late passed with deadly chill over his soul again it became suddenly plain and perceptible to him that he had just told a fearful lie that he would never now be able to speak freely of everything that he would never again be able to speak of anything to any one the anguish of this thought was such that for a moment he almost forgot himself he got up from his seat and not looking at any one walked towards the door what are you about cried razumihin clutching him by the arm he sat down again and began looking about him in silence they were all looking at him in perplexity but what are you all so dull for he shouted suddenly and quite unexpectedly do say something what's the use of sitting like this come do speak let us talk we meet together and sit in silence come anything oh thank god i was afraid the same thing as yesterday was beginning again said pulcheria alexandrovna crossing herself what is the matter rodya asked avdotya romanovna distrustfully oh nothing i remembered something he answered and suddenly laughed well if you remembered something that's all right i was beginning to think muttered zosimov getting up from the sofa it is time for me to be off i will look in again perhaps if i can he made his bows and went out what an excellent man observed pulcheria alexandrovna yes excellent splendid well educated intelligent raskolnikov began suddenly speaking with surprising rapidity and a liveliness he had not shown till then i can't remember where i met him before my illness i believe i have met him somewhere and this is a good man too he nodded at razumihin do you like him dunya he asked her and suddenly for some unknown reason laughed very much answered dunya foo what a pig you are razumihin protested blushing in terrible confusion and he got up from his chair pulcheria alexandrovna smiled faintly but raskolnikov laughed aloud where are you off to i must go you need not at all stay zosimov has gone so you must don't go what's the time is it twelve o'clock what a pretty watch you have got dunya but why are you all silent again i do all the talking it was a present from marfa petrovna answered dunya and a very expensive one added pulcheria alexandrovna ah what a big one hardly like a lady's i like that sort said dunya so it is not a present from her fiance thought razumihin and was unreasonably delighted i thought it was luzhin's present observed raskolnikov no he has not made dunya any presents yet ah and do you remember mother i was in love and wanted to get married he said suddenly looking at his mother who was disconcerted by the sudden change of subject and the way he spoke of it oh yes my dear pulcheria alexandrovna exchanged glances with dunya and razumihin hm yes what shall i tell you i don't remember much indeed she was such a sickly girl he went on growing dreamy and looking down again quite an invalid she was fond of giving alms to the poor and was always dreaming of a nunnery and once she burst into tears when she began talking to me about it yes yes i remember i remember very well she was an ugly little thing i really don't know what drew me to her then i think it was because she was always ill if she had been lame or hunchback i believe i should have liked her better still he smiled dreamily yes it was a sort of spring delirium no it was not only spring delirium said dunya with warm feeling he fixed a strained intent look on his sister but did not hear or did not understand her words then completely lost in thought he got up went up to his mother kissed her went back to his place and sat down you love her even now said pulcheria alexandrovna touched her now oh yes you ask about her no that's all now as it were in another world and so long ago and indeed everything happening here seems somehow far away 
he looked attentively at them you now i seem to be looking at you from a thousand miles away but goodness knows why we are talking of that and what's the use of asking about it he added with annoyance and biting his nails fell into dreamy silence again what a wretched lodging you have rodya it's like a tomb said pulcheria alexandrovna suddenly breaking the oppressive silence i am sure it's quite half through your lodging you have become so melancholy my lodging he answered listlessly yes the lodging had a great deal to do with it i thought that too if only you knew though what a strange thing you said just now mother he said laughing strangely a little more and their companionship this mother and this sister with him after three years absence this intimate tone of conversation in face of the utter impossibility of really speaking about anything would have been beyond his power of endurance but there was one urgent matter which must be settled one way or the other that day so he had decided when he woke now he was glad to remember it as a means of escape listen dunya he began gravely and dryly of course i beg your pardon for yesterday but i consider it my duty to tell you again that i do not withdraw from my chief point it is me or luzhin if i am a scoundrel you must not be one is enough if you marry luzhin i cease at once to look on you as a sister rodya rodya it is the same as yesterday again pulcheria alexandrovna cried mournfully and why do you call yourself a scoundrel i can't bear it you said the same yesterday brother dunya answered firmly and with the same dryness in all this there is a mistake on your part i thought it over at night and found out the mistake it is all because you seem to fancy i am sacrificing myself to someone and for someone that is not the case at all i am simply marrying for my own sake because things are hard for me though of course i shall be glad if i succeed in being useful to my family but that is not the chief motive for my decision she is lying he thought to himself biting his nails vindictively proud creature she won't admit she wants to do it out of charity too haughty oh base characters they even love as though they hate oh how i hate them all in fact continued dunya i am marrying pyotr petrovitch because of two evils i choose the less i intend to do honestly all he expects of me so i am not deceiving him why did you smile just now she too flushed and there was a gleam of anger in her eyes all he asked with a malignant grin within certain limits both the manner and form of pyotr petrovitch's courtship showed me at once what he wanted he may of course think too well of himself but i hope he esteems me too why are you laughing again and why are you blushing again you are lying sister you are intentionally lying simply from feminine obstinacy simply to hold your own against me you cannot respect luzhin i have seen him and talked with him so you are selling yourself for money and so in any case you are acting basely and i am glad at least that you can blush for it it is not true i am not lying cried dunya losing her composure i would not marry him if i were not convinced that he esteems me and thinks highly of me i would not marry him if i were not firmly convinced that i can respect him fortunately i can have convincing proof of it this very day and such a marriage is not a vileness as you say and even if you were right if i really had determined on a vile action is it not merciless on your part to speak to me like that why do you demand of me a heroism that perhaps you have not either it is despotism it is tyranny if i ruin anyone it is only myself i am not committing a murder why do you look at me like that why are you so pale rodya darling what's the matter good heavens you have made him faint cried pulcheria alexandrovna no no nonsense it's nothing a little giddiness not fainting you have fainting on the brain hm yes what was i saying oh yes in what way will you get convincing proof today that you can respect him and that he esteems you as you said i think you said today mother show rodya pyotr petrovitch's letter said dunya with trembling hands pulcheria alexandrovna gave him the letter he took it with great interest but before opening it he suddenly looked with a sort of wonder at dunya it is strange he said slowly as though struck by a new idea what am i making such a fuss for what is it all about marry whom you like 
he said this as though to himself but said it aloud and looked for some time at his sister as though puzzled he opened the letter at last still with the same look of strange wonder on his face then slowly and attentively he began reading and read it through twice Pulcheria alexandrovna showed marked anxiety and all indeed expected something particular what surprises me he began after a short pause handing the letter to his mother but not addressing anyone in particular is that he is a business man a lawyer and his conversation is pretentious indeed and yet he writes such an uneducated letter they all started they had expected something quite different but they all write like that you know razumihin observed abruptly have you read it yes we showed him rodya we consulted him just now pokeria alexandrovna began embarrassed that's just the jargon of the courts razumihin put in legal documents are written like that to this day legal yes it's just legal business language not so very uneducated and not quite educated business language pyotr petrovitch makes no secret of the fact that he had a cheap education he is proud indeed of having made his own way avdotya romanovna observed somewhat offended by her brother's tone well if he's proud of it he has reason i don't deny it you seem to be offended sister at my making only such a frivolous criticism on the letter and to think that i speak of such trifling matters on purpose to annoy you it is quite the contrary an observation apropos of the style occurred to me that is by no means irrelevant as things stand there is one expression blame yourselves put in very significantly and plainly and there is besides a threat that he will go away at once if i am present that threat to go away is equivalent to a threat to abandon you both if you are disobedient and to abandon you now after summoning you to petersburg well what do you think can one resent such an expression from luzhin as we should if he he pointed to razumihin had written it or zosimov or one of us no answered dunya with more animation i saw clearly that it was too naively expressed and that perhaps he simply has no skill in writing that is a true criticism brother i did not expect indeed it is expressed in legal style and sounds coarser than perhaps he intended but i must disillusion you a little there is one expression in the letter one slander about me and rather a contemptible one i gave the money last night to the widow a woman in consumption crushed with trouble and not on the pretext of the funeral but simply to pay for the funeral and not to the daughter a young woman as he writes of notorious behaviour whom i saw last night for the first time in my life but to the widow in all this i see a too hasty desire to slander me and to raise dissension between us it is expressed again in legal jargon that is to say with a too obvious display of the aim and with a very naive eagerness he is a man of intelligence but to act sensibly intelligence is not enough it all shows the man and i don't think he has a great esteem for you i tell you this simply to warn you because i sincerely wish for your good dunya did not reply her resolution had been taken she was only awaiting the evening then what is your decision rodya asked pokeria alexandrovna who was more uneasy than ever at the sudden new business-like tone of his talk what decision you see pyotr petrovitch writes that you are not to be with us this evening and that he will go away if you come so will you come that of course is not for me to decide but for you first if you are not offended by such a request and secondly by dunya if she too is not offended i will do what you think best he added dryly dunya has already decided and i fully agree with her pokeria alexandrovna hastened to declare i decided to ask you rodya to urge you not to fail to be with us at this interview said dunya will you come yes i will ask you too to be with us at eight o'clock she said addressing razumihin mother i am inviting him too quite right dunya well since you have decided added pulcheria alexandrovna so be it i shall feel easier myself i do not like concealment and deception better let us have the whole truth pyotr petrovitch may be angry or not now end of part three chapter three